It's time for the Giz Wiz with Mads Mattis Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1975, recorded Thursday, February 15th, 2024. 18 years, still done. B On this episode of the Giz Wiz, we head back in time and take a look at the 18 years of Giz Wiz. I have my Apple Vision Pro review, and it is a big one. Plus, we have another crappy bathroom gadget. All next on the Giz Wiz. It's the same and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. now. Now, and here he is, able to be drafted. Dick D. Bartolo, how you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. On our 18th year, Anniversary. Dennis is here. We're glad. Okay. Woo! This week. That is. I, I found a few facts online. Okay. The Gizwiz started as a daily show February 2006. Whoa. Um, I think podcasting was invented in 2005. Yes, exactly. It is certainly one ah! of the. Oldest, oh, <laughs> and the oldest running podcasts. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, so you have fancy Dale glasses. I just have a bottle. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know, this is a very um, inexpensive champagne, uh, now made from real grapes. <laughs> Now, what would any celebration be without a cake? Oh, my, oh my God. So this is what I for, uh, forgot earlier. We're, we delayed the show a tad because I needed to run and snag the birthday cake. Giz whiz 18 oh years. Um, Chad, that is amazing. <laughs> Look at that. And I even got them to make it in Giz whiz colors. We got green and blue. Oh, my God. As the icing. So you, <laughs> there you go. Oh, this was. Uh, wow. I wish I was there. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> My surprise. What is, this it, is, what is it inside? You know, you, I'm sure it's you know. vanilla, and then the filling is strawberry. Oh my god! Um, that was an extra dollar. Uh, the the <laughs> strawberry filling, but I decided to splurge on myself. Granted, uh, Josh may get a piece later. He's not here at the moment, but uh, oh, okay, yeah, he, uh, that Josh, our producer, should have <laughs> absolutely have a piece. And uh, here, I'll, I'll give you a good slice yeah oh i'm so jealous i just have crappy uh champagne like beverage <laughs> champagne-esque welch's champagne yeah, exactly. yeah okay there we go that's a oh wow cut away of the yeah. strawberry i don't have oh, a plate that, so that that looks great although this stuff is bottled in in france uh, French, New Jersey. It's right outside of <laughs> Pacific. It's like uh, oh the champagne, pan, re champagne region of California. Oh, wow. That is great. That is great. Now, I did find out about you. So, it started in 2006. It was the Daily Gizwiz for a while. Mm -hmm. And... Leo was doing a monthly show and a weekly show, and then we met at a press event, and he said, I want to do a daily show. Could you do that? And I said, yeah, why not? Uh, and then as Leo started getting more shows, the editor said, why do we have to do five shows? We Can't you just do five gadgets in one show so we have less editing here? And so <laughs> we switched to that. And then... It was, let me see, Chad Johnson Woo! hosting. Oh, it's your birthday, Chad. Or your anniversary. Chad Johnson took over hosting the Giz with January 2014. Wow. Wow. 
Yeah. 2014? Been 10 years it? ago? Yeah, the show's 18. You know what? You've been doing it more than anybody else. So actually, I think that might be the first time I guest hosted. Because I don't think I took over for... Oh, okay. I think that was probably the anniversary of me doing my first guest host. Would be my oh, guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just found this on TV Wikipedia. <laughs> Said uh, Chad Johnson took over hosting for Leo. Maybe I did. That, that, that seems so early. That seems so early. Twenty. It does. It it does. does. Oh, you know, not, it makes sense. Makes not Chad, because it said after the April fifteen, uh, the April twenty fifteen show, Gizwiz left Twit oh. and went independent. I do remember that. Okay, the final. The 2015. Episode. Yeah, that's about a year later. I remember that. Yeah. The last show, um, Gizwa show on Twit was April 30th, 2015. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. no, I guess yeah. that doesn't yeah. make sense. Because, yeah, I took no, over about a year it, before. Wow. For a comedy uh, podcast of the year award, which it won that. in 2009. Yeah. And somewhere around here, I have that award. I don't keep it anywhere <laughs> special. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And then we were nominated again in 2016. But although the Diamond Club, remember the Diamond yes, Club? Yes, yes. They rigged Diamond it. Diamond Club wanted us to be again in the comedy category. But somehow it ended up in technology where we never would win. I mean, no, 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 no. Now we're going up against Twit, the actual yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to win that one. Uh, so anyway, 18 years of this shows, you don't have to be that good to be on the Internet. So, <laughs> also, I like yeah. how you said I've been doing it more than anyone. I, well, look at yourself, Dickie D. <laughs> look at you. You've been on this show since day one. Oh, that's true. Crazy. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, it's great. It's it great is great. It really is. It's, it's uh, I mean, gosh, 18 years is <laughs> a lot of time. It a is. lot I, of time I to pass. I think I for Christian Todman a total of 18 years. So this is, although I worked for MAD for 52 years. Right. All of these things done uh, simultaneously. So it's, I'm not 100 and, uh, eight, uh, 117 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but so you feel working. like it uh, sometimes, feel, you know. Feel <laughs> I feel like I have lived all those lives. Um, well, I am just so excited to continue on. Uh, past 18 years, it's been a great 18. And... Um, the future's looking brighter than ever, so it's oh no no and and, great. The, and the chat room is great. The chat absolutely. Room is, we wouldn't is, be here if it wasn't for the chat room, the listeners, the patrons. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We yeah, <laughs> that's right. So we've been supported like more than uh, let's see, we went out in 2015. Listener supported for nine years. Wow. Yeah. Pretty That's about half now. Yeah, almost oh, half. Around half. half. Man. That's awesome. Anyway. Well, should that we get awesome. in and do it? Yeah, let's do? jump in. Holy moly. I'm I'm excited to show off the Vision Pro. Oh, I have Vision Pro. My you know video about it, but I want to spend some time taking your questions and taking the chat room's questions. I think that Direct questions are probably the easiest way to <laughs> explain this thing. Um, but yeah, and then we have uh, some, okay, some more gadgets, gadgets to get to. One uh, right before Chad's review of the Vision Pro. Okay, I think I have everything here. Uh, let me check the ingredients. I have the two eggs, and that's all I need because we're making scrambled eggs. Okay. Nice. Now you know how hard that is because you need eggs and you have to scramble. Okay. Unless you have Incredi egg. Uh huh. Mm -mm -mm. Microwave egg cooker. 
delicious eggs ready before your toast. All right, we'll see about that. All right. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so I know nothing about this. I'm sure you're supposed to wash it before you use it, but... Have you ever you seen this thing, Chad? No. Yeah, I've no. never seen yeah. one. Egg. That's simple. <laughs> That's simple. I can do that. I can follow that. Uh, um. All right. In a vacuum sealed package. Not really, but... Uh, oh, scissors. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Now, let's see what we have here. Okay. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh, those are recipes. Uh, all right. This is easy. Do not cut plastic wrapping with a scissors. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Um, crack open up to four eggs. On the shell cracking prongs and add any ingredients you want. We're just going to make scrambled eggs. All right. Your warranty is now void. <laughs> they get you every time with that, don't they? Where, um, where are the prongs? The prongs? Oh, the oh, prongs oh, oh, are... Oh, okay. There you go. So... Crack the eggs. You know, I have no idea what we're doing here, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's on the nose. They give you a little cracker. Crack an area. Okay. This yeah, is, yeah. There's a shell here. Um, for crispy scrambled eggs, leave the shell. Okay. <laughs> the three stooges, they eat the shells and throw the eggs away. What in the world? Mix and microwave. All right. Uh, you can I, do up to four eggs. Well, it shows doing this mix and microwave. Okay. What about? Oh, that's the. All right. Second. We're going to do this one. I don't get this at all. I don't see how. All right. Now, that's part of the egg, not more shell. Um, now, Isn't it I think you just scoop? shake it up. Shake it, shake it, shake oh, it. Mix and microwave? Yeah. Oh. Mix it and then microwave. I thought you said mix in microwave. No, no. Mix and oh, microwave. Oh, all, right. all right. So. Now I found out the lid. Well, you'll see what happens with the uh, lid. Two eggs, it's one minute and 40 seconds. You've done this before, I can tell. <laughs> Let's see. Cook time. One thirty-five. it says, for a... Thousand watt microwave, and I believe this is a thousand watt microwave. And start. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. It's very inexpensive. I can't even remember. I think it was. You need to start the toast to see if it's oh, done yeah, first. No, this is from uh, Amazon. This is what makes it happen. <laughs> I don't remember seeing the arrows. Oh, right. I didn't see the eyes, the arrows in the box. Maybe they're at the bottom of the box. Uh, wow, we have 46 seconds to go. Convenient meal. <laughs> A convenient meal in hotel rooms. Yeah, well, if you want to carry that with you, I have eggs every yeah, morning. I know, but... I love carrying my eggs. A hotel that has yeah. a microwave. Yeah. Uh, a must-have for road warriors. <laughs> I cannot imagine carrying this in eggs. Great to for a college hotel. dorms and compact kitchens. You probably could add seasoning to it. I, guess. Oh, I'm I sure can do anything, add anything with my fresh eggs and a microwave. It makes fast and fluffy every time. Every time. Uh, now I'm excited. It's kind of fun when you haven't done it ever before. Mm. Oh, what? Oh. What you think is what? Well, oh, no, it has. Oh, you know what? It's just supposed to have. Oh, it made you know there. what? Did it? It made scrambled. It there. did make. Wow! 
Yeah. Of course, as far as nonstick goes. Man, we were hating. And you know what? look at that. This is pretty good. This is not bad. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. the lid popped off. All right. Let me see. It's actually pretty good. I am. <laughs> why did the cover fall off? Maybe it wasn't. So you have to learn how to yeah, seal it properly. I don't know anything about locking it. You know, it there just is, seems no, it's to just, sit on there. There's nothing there in the instructions, no, but it's maybe just, the cover pops it off. Oh, it's, it's, maybe it's maybe you have to read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> that was the instruction. Bad eggs, mix, microwave, enjoy. Oh, that was it. Fluffy eggs every time. But you know what? If you threw some uh, bacon bits in here, this would be good. So, put uh, this thing called Incredit Egg. I think this is pretty good for. We'll have Chad check the price. I can't believe that it's plastic. Honestly, I yeah. thought that it'd have to be like a ceramic or something to be good. No, it, it works really well. And I think if you threw, threw some ingredients in there, how much? Oh, it's seven bucks. Yeah. Uh, Eggs were made for the microwave, I guess. Yeah. Also, those prongs are supposed to act as an egg yolk <laughs> separator. I'm not quite sure. I guess you have to make sure you put the whole egg on one side the and then it'll like slide out. Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I guess. Oh, the I instructions are guess. really vague. Yeah, that seems vague. It seems. <laughs> There's just one, uh, one warning. Not for boiled eggs. Eggs may explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't. Do the boiled eggs, yeah. man. That's anyway, I, I, I think we're both kind of shocked that it actually <laughs> ended up making something edible. <laughs> no, absolutely. When I saw the lid had blown off or popped off, I thought, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> what did the lid start to melt into the eggs?" But it was it was pretty good. Man, that is funny. Wow. Okay, well, before we um, continue much more of this conversation, I'm getting a little bored, so I'm going to go into. Um, Virtual uh -oh, space here it is. now. Uh, I'm gonna have to spatially compute to keep my um, attention span going. Uh, so let's just strap in. And uh, I recorded a little review of uh, the Vision Pro. So let's go ahead and take a look. The Apple Vision Pro. It is here, it is in the hands of normal people like me. And honestly, it is an incredibly, incredibly impressive device. And I would recommend it for anyone who absolutely has to have the cutting edge of technology. But other than that, probably not for you. Let's start off by just taking a look at the headset. Maybe you haven't seen these around. I just kind of want to go over some of the hardware features of uh, what you get. Uh, this is Apple's answer to an augmented reality that they want to create. You have the front of the Vision Pro. There's a screen back there that'll show a pass-through uh, of your eyes. You have cameras, you have sensors, cameras over here, cameras over here. You have vents for air to flow through, lenses for your eyes, multiple pieces here, the actual device, a light shield, which is that piece that I just connected, and then sort of like this cushion, um, and that connects all with magnets together. You have these little AirPod-like things that are speakers that are directed towards your ear. A cable that goes to an external battery, and that's all it is. There are no uh, USB ports that actually will like allow you to like add a hard drive or anything. Uh, that USB port right there is just for charging, and this cable does not disconnect. Uh, this one can be disconnected with just a twist. Then you have a strap along the back. This is ratcheted with a little thing over here on the side, uh, and it works really well, but this can also be removed. All you have to do is pull on these little tabs here, and that portion can come off, 
inside of the box, you get a different type of headset, which I'll actually go ahead and use for this review. So then you just slap it in there once you have it pointed in the right direction. And now you have a different strap. And this one has like Velcro, which will be a bit easier to uh, always have mounted onto your face. Uh, and so that is uh, the hardware. You also get a lens uh, cap and a charger and a USB-C cord in the box. It's a very, very large box. No carrying case. Uh, that cost extra. So in order to put it on, typically I loosen the back, set it on like a pair of goggles, then tighten the strap along the back, uh, depending on which strap I have. And uh, there we go. Now I have my Vision Pro connected. I take the battery and I'll just slip it into my pocket or set it down next to a table or you know on the couch or wherever I'm, uh, I'm hanging out. Now I wanted to give you all an idea of what it is like once you actually put the headset on. So I'm going ahead and recording my view. Now this is a bit of a shaky camera because it's strapped to my head here. Um, but this is an idea of what I am seeing. And you'll notice it's just the normal world. This is the, Gizwiz, this is the view that I have of the Gizwiz Studio. One of these things is not like the others, and we'll get to that <laughs> in just a second. But other than that, you are seeing the normal world. Uh, and I think that's kind of the first impression that I think people should be getting because I think that that is Apple's vision of what this is, is it is augmented reality, not just virtual reality. Now, if the headset was to turn off, I would see black. I would see darkness because I'm looking at screens. Everything that I see is a interpret is it is seeing you know the cameras are being passed through to a screen, but it's happening so fast that it truly does feel like goggles, which is super duper impressive. And then to control the environment, I just use the hands that I was born with, and I can pinch to uh, to grab and move around. It is not tracking my fingers to, to, to where to click. Uh, it's actually tracking my eyes. So if I look at this app and, and click my fingers, it'll kind of come forward. It was kind of in the background before. And then if I look down at the corner, a little contextual grabber will show up. Then I can pinch and drag and that will resize the window. If I look at the bottom of the window, same thing, that will allow me to move this either a lot closer, which probably won't look that different to you guys because uh, you're seeing a 2D version, but to me, whoa, it's coming in uh, close. By the way, see this? See how my hand is, is kind of <laughs> working through? That's all, the, the Vision Pro is figuring all of that out when my physical hand needs to be sort of chopped out from the virtual app that's there in front of us. And you can even see, um, if I snag that and uh, move this window across my table here, you can see there's a, a shadow being cast on the, on the table and it falls off as uh, it gets to the edge of the table, which is kind of cool. So this is the vision that Apple has, is that you're less, um, disconnected from the world, you can see the world, you can interact with the world, you can still turn off the world. So I can turn this dial up here and it will send me is very, very, very dark, but this is the moon and it's nighttime on the moon. So I actually, I, I can change that. So I can go over here into my environments here. See, it's automatic. I'm gonna set this to, to light. Let's give me, you know, I can actually close my notes here. And now I'm on the moon. So I can turn the environment off so that I'm back in normal space or I can turn it on and that way I'm kind of distracted. What's funny and something I did not realize is that the uh, virtual space is actually crisper and clearer than the cameras. The cameras are not as high resolution as the virtual uh, locations, which is kind of, kind of funny. And then I can just uh, spatially compute uh, like um, I would use an iPad or a, um, or a laptop except that these apps are just going to be floating here in space. Same thing, and then I could, you know, use, um, I can hit the digital crown, bring up my notes again. There they are, and then I move them over here. And now we can actually 
work, which is pretty cool. And that's the whole point of, of this. Um, some nice things is that uh, you can connect a virtual keyboard. So this is the typical keyboard um, that you would, uh, that would display. I can either click the keys with my finger or I can pinch and click the keys or I can bring in a uh, Bluetooth keyboard. I'll turn this on. It's going to connect. Looks like it just connected and you can see that that keyboard changed. And now I have this virtual key, uh, uh, virtual preview. And I can delete all those H's or look up here and, you know, type back the H's or delete the H's. Or because this is all virtual, I can snag that little preview, set it in front of my keyboard here, and then O U G H, um, and I can type that way, which is kind of fun. Um, you can also do that with, uh, with a laptop as well. So let's say that you're uh, hanging out and you want to connect uh, your laptop. There's a few ways to do this. Sometimes, there you go, it'll pop up as a little connect option. If that doesn't happen, you have control center. How that works is you just look towards the sky and uh, this little thing appears and then I could go in over here, go here, and I could also connect to it right there if uh, it doesn't show up there. But either way, I'll go ahead and hit connect there and it'll take that screen and it's going to give me a virtual screen uh, that's, you know, absolutely huge. So if I wanted to, I could turn on my virtual environment. I can actually look down at this, hide all the other apps. And then here, let's go back and uh, I can actually grab my mouse here, go over here to YouTube. And I'm going to snag and I'm going to make that as big as possible. Holy moly, it's massive. And I'm here on the moon. And this is my entire laptop. I can bring up music. Um, I can bring up all my apps. I can, I can edit videos. I can do whatever I want here. It's awesome. Okay, so now you have an idea of what someone who is obsessed with the Vision Pro does with their time <laughs> inside of the Vision Pro. Um, just an idea of some of the killer apps. Uh, these are basically my pros and cons. Pros, watching stuff. Okay, inside of a virtual theater, 3D content is insane. Uh, the crispness of these displays is just absolutely amazing. Uh, second pro is screen real estate. You have your entire three-dimensional space all the way around you. The amount of screens that you can have is unlimited. You can stack them on top of each other. Um, I wish there was a better way to manage that screen real estate, but um, you have, you know, that's a, definitely a killer feature. Next is that you can compute while doing other things. Okay, you can compute while you're cooking. I was washing my hands the other day and I was like, click, 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 didn't matter, but my hands were all soapy because, uh, you know, you can still use your, uh, your, your fingers and stuff. Um, there, I've been seeing people eating food and, you know, using dirty fingers while that. And it's kind of nice. You can just do it while moving around. Um, I also really like the gaming aspect. It's very crisp. It's very cool. I like that you can not only connect a computer, a keyboard, but you can also connect a controller. And I've already played a few games that are perfect on controllers, so you can uh, pull that off really nice. And then um, the final kind of killer app or pro is, that, is just kind of connecting everything. The computer, from the computer to the keyboard to the, um, uh, to the game controller, and this being a real actual computer, not just a crummy little headset, it actually like can process stuff. Uh, it can use all those connections really, really well. Now the cons, what do I not like about the headset? Well, uh, it does take a bit to get used to wearing it. Um, I don't have a ton of fatigue, but there is definitely a sense of relief after I take the headset off after a while. I can deal with it though. I don't find it too heavy. I don't find it too bad. And I do find that the strap that you use changes uh, a lot. Another con is the eye tracking and the pinching and clicking and stuff. It's not perfect. Uh, there's times that my hand will maybe be resting on, on the couch, a little weird, you know. I just want to be able to like, you know, click without it seeing my hands. But what's happening is the camera is seeing where you're pinching. And if the camera can't see your hands, it doesn't register the click. And so 
that can get just a bit annoying. Also, if you're next to someone using one and they're pinching and it might register the wrong hands, it's just not a perfect solution yet. And uh, so that can be a, a bit annoying. Um, another thing is that packing it and moving it, like it is a larger kind of device. Um, and finding the right backpack that can store it and actually move it around is not easy. And it is a bit more of a, of a process to get it from one place to another than say a laptop. Um, so don't really love that. Now, some things that I was worried would be a big issue that ended up not being that big of an issue is battery life. I haven't, uh, I've run into battery life issues every once in a while, but typically as long as I'm managing keeping it plugged in, um, I'm not really having an issue with battery life. Also, the external battery being a strap, I was worried that would be an issue, ended up not being an issue. And then the other thing that I was worried about was the resolution of the screens and this pass through, and that's all been insanely great. I mean, the resolution is way better than I could have had ever expected. Um, and it's, it's insane that a lot of times the digital content is crisper than the uh, video feed of uh, your surroundings, which is a bit crazy sometimes. So all in all, is it worth the $3,500 starting price, probably around $4,000 once you're all checked out? Oh um, it's a very, very hard question to answer if I don't know, you know, you and your budget. I have no regrets, but I am definitely a first adopter uh, here, and I'm excited to be on the cutting edge. I can see once this is lighter, cheaper, has a few less, you know, crazy cool features that probably aren't needed, like the pass-through and that sort of thing, um, then... Uh, I would recommend it a lot easier uh, than, than I do now. But uh, that is my review of the Apple Vision Pro. Now I gotta work on my vision hair. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> and we're back. Uh, I, I'm amazed that Scooter X didn't find it for like $900. <laughs> I definitely feel like that's gonna be, uh, uh, the next generation of products is gonna be copying the Vision Pro. And I already see it with the Quest. Um, yeah, I definitely. Now, now you said you can leave it plugged in. Yeah, and 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 the battery will never run out. Right, as right. So as long as it's plugged into like thirty watts or more, I think that uh, oh, oh, it okay, will. Okay. It, it will because I, I read somewhere someone said the spare battery is three hundred dollars. Yeah. Is that oh, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's expensive. Uh, it's kind of not billed as something that you buy extra batteries for. You can, oh, okay. um, but uh, they're definitely kind of you know they're kind of just saying just use the original uh, that comes with it. But yeah, you can plug it in, um, and that's typically kind of what I do. I, there's not a lot of the the problem is the windows are locked in space. They're not really locked to you, so moving around is actually kind of discouraged in a way if I was to be doing some spatially computing and then move to the other room all my windows would stay where they were so I'm typically not walking or putting it on and like walking the dog you know that sort of thing um, and so because I'm all <laughs> get out of here kitty cat because I'm already um, landed somewhere most likely plugging it in is not difficult um, is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I haven't had much eye fatigue. Other, mostly it's just face fatigue and like, my eyes feel maybe a bit uh, humid, you know? But I, I haven't been getting any like, my eyes feel tired because I'm using them as a, as a clicker, you know, as my mouse, basically. Um, and there's a few muscle memory things I constantly wanna reach for what I'm aiming for, but you really don't have to. You can just, you know, rest your hand look at something and click because your fingers aren't where you're pointing, your eyes are where you're selecting, um, which is a bit to okay. get used to. And, uh, and did you say you're not really looking through your what's behind the glasses? Right. The so what you the cameras are seeing the cameras are seeing what's right. So the pass through, it's not real like the the light in this room is is hitting the cameras, the cameras are processing it and then putting onto the video screen for me to see. Oh, I don't okay. see any real 
you know, uh, there's no actual pass through. There's none okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. You know. All right. That's fascinating. Which is different than, you know, most people hear augmented reality and they think something like Google Glass where there's a transparent screen inside of your vision. But yeah. this is, a, you're actually looking at a completely opaque screen, but the cameras on the outside are showing you the real world. It's very okay. convincing. It's, it's very convincing that it's the real world and you get very used to it. Um, but it's not true augmented reality. And that also means that when you go into full virtual space, um, it's completely opaque. You're not seeing any of the real world poke through. Um, Great. So, yeah. All right. So any you like it questions? enough that you'll be giving it away to the patron. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I need to insure this thing, get some, get some extra insurance on it. I've, I, and I've definitely found that, uh, I've been wanting it. Um, whenever I want to do work, it is so nice to have, you know, mail and my laptop and uh, my, you know, Asana and some web pages and doing some research and having it all up and watching videos and scrolling through Twitter. Um, I definitely think once more apps come out for it, it's going to get better and better. I think that it needs a better ecosystem of understanding, you know, maybe this app isn't that great if you don't have a controller or if, you know, like something like that, like where, you know, this is a great app if you have the controller, but if you're just using touch, probably not that great. Um, okay. I also would really like some way to manage the windows basically, because it's very, I would, there's no way to minimize windows. You just close them and you can kind of get overwhelmed with how many you have. Um, I wish that there was like a dock where I could quickly access stuff that's kind of always there. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of frustrating too. Uh, but I will say, you know, I'm seeing, you know, that's what multiple screens are for in the chat, is <laughs> I was really, really, really skeptical that the resolution would be high enough that I wouldn't want a real screen. You know, I was, I've used 1440 monitors almost my entire life, 4K monitors. I was so excited about those because I just want the highest resolution that my eyeballs can see. And I was very skeptical that this could replace a monitor and I've been converted. This is high enough resolution that I could use this instead of a massive monitor, um, which is awesome. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, the, oh, and, and the final thought is that it is still a bit difficult to do creation on a very f finite scale. That What I'm trying to say is like trying to edit videos directly from this without using a laptop with a mouse is pretty difficult. Um, it's, it's impossible. Y you know, using these gestures to try to get frame, perfect frame stuff is not, it's not a direct comparison to a mouse or a keyboard where you can control fine, you know, actions on a computer. So some of the pro level stuff, I still definitely need to whip out a laptop, have a keyboard and a mouse uh, to, to pull it off. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. There's my Vision Pro conversation. It's a long one. Okay. Back to you, well, Dickie D. Oh, uh, we'll do something cheaper. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not difficult to pull off. Yeah. That's I had true. a pair of magnifier glasses for doing uh, close-up work. I can't find them. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I thought, well, I'll just buy another pair. And then on Amazon, I thought. I didn't know what magnification to buy. And then I saw that you can buy uh, 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 multi-magnification glasses. See, this okay. is my kind of glasses. Like yeah, there you go. That's your vision, four Pro. different lenses. Now, you are, if you're into optics, you know the name Bosch and Loam. And second only to them is... Bosch and Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dezeku, yeah, this company. All right, yeah, I haven't heard of them either. All right, but I like the idea, a couple of things about this that are nice. Let me look on the box so I get the magnifications correct. Uh, so it comes with a 1.5 magnification, 2.5, 3.5, and 5 time magnification. Um, USB-C charging, all right, built-in LED light. When you turn the LED light on, 
it shows you the state of the battery. So I charge this battery is full up. Um, and then you have the LED light and the light that was low, medium. I guess it just, uh, low and high. Okay. Then also the LED light, you can point down mm, toward your work if you want. And this is how it works. So you pick out the magnification that you want. The glasses have a little etching on them, but the case, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Does that show up in the camera? If you put the, if you put them back in the proper place, mm -hmm. it'll show you which ones it is. Uh, I'm using the uh, fives. All right. So the, bring them up to the front and they just click in and then just turn that on to do. These really do look like okay. a Vision Pro knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really weird. Look like you have one eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they That's are true. powerful. Holy tamole. It. <laughs> yeah, you can you see the ant civilization they, they rising up. Again. Uh, let me put in something. Do you have to send like the ones you don't use back? How does that work? No, no, the, oh. the set is yours to keep. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was 25 bucks. You know, it's good if you have a family. You could all do it. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. If, if people have different yeah, magnifications. Yeah, yeah. It's good uh, if your eyes have multiple personalities. Much better. <laughs> and Smile. You know, I don't know how I can... You know, let's see if you can see... It's crazy. All of a sudden, the box is bigger. Through the lens. Yeah, exactly. You'll see just for a second Tell me the if you magnification. Can read the box through the lens. Does it work? Yeah, you can see it magnifying yeah. there. Does it magnify? Yeah. I don't think so. It was hard no. to get the focus, but at first. All it right, did. so I like I mean, these a lot. Great. I believe they were about twenty-five bucks. But we'll go, Chad. We'll go to, to uh, Amazon and see what they are, and then Scooter X will find them for three dollars. Okay, so I'll put them back <laughs> on again. Actually. They're very comfortable. How do you get to turn on the light? And I can turn the light on. I forgot how to turn the light. Oh, the light uh, light switch is on the side. Uh, uh, uh. Huh. Oh, they're, they're great for tasking. Everybody yeah. is so big. Look at <laughs> you. so bright. <laughs> yeah, that's our audience. Big and bright. It looks like your mind's eye is like yes. opening. Yes. You're having an epiphany. That's crazy. Um... There it is. Only twenty three ninety nine. Oh, okay. Uh, it and looks you know like what? It, it, five dollars oh, off five coupon. Oh, wow! Look at that. 20. So nineteen bucks, right? Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I had to put on a new watch band, and you know, with that little spring thing, and I thought this drive me crazy. Let me just get some. And I got these, and it's great. That is great. You can't play video games on it, but <laughs> then again, it's the twenty dollars. You can still spatially compute. Your just computer will be closer in space. Just, there you go. And, there you go. Ah, and yeah. you can pinch and pinch at your computer. Um, you know how, like, and when you've the, really I, been getting into something, you dream of that thing. Um, I don't know if it's quite the same, but I have once or twice pinched and act, you know, to like a phone, to a phone or so. So I have, why is this not responding to my oh, pinch? Oh, that's funny. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I've done that. I've done okay, that. well, these are, these are nice. I, they feel like high, they seem like high quality from, from they, your video. They're very, they're very well made. And, and the thing is, I couldn't find it, but they've been getting tinier and 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 tinier instruction manuals there you know it's like one inch square with type on it you'll you, impossible to read so these will be great for that kind of thing i think someone in the chat room said this will be great for spacemen for reading manuals that come with <laughs> gadgets exactly and are impossible to read exactly that's great that's great you'll have your you'll have a whole 
new package setup. It'll include the uh, the works um, uh, uh, blister pack opener, your glasses for reading <laughs> the instructions, um, some type of like battery optimizer. I feel like you'll just have a whole setup for new gadgets. Um, okay. <laughs> And with that, let's move into... <gasps> you know you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. We're going to the loo! This is Bathroom Gadgets. So uh, I recorded a, uh, a, ba a bathroom gadget just early. Okay. Hey, Nikki. So we are back at it with another bathroom gadget. Today we are taking a look at the Lifty Lou. This is the original toilet seat handle. We know lifting the toilet seat can be so, so difficult. And that <laughs> is where the Lifty Lou comes it's in to save the day. It encourages folks to lift and lower the toilet seat resulting in less mess. It's hygienic. So the actual like handle part of it is hygienic. Uh, it's ergonomic and durable. So here's the idea is that you take the Lifty Lou, let's go ahead and open it out of the packaging and you glue it, you attach it to your toilet seat, allowing you to have a new handle on the toilet seat. Now they had a few different colors and I chose to go with the tile design. They also had just like pure white, but that wasn't fun at all. Uh, we have to go with tile here. Uh, it looks like it was also coming with a whole bunch of 3M adhesive, different sizes as well. And it looks like all we do is peel and stick. So I'll uh, determine um, one of the 3M sizes. We'll peel off one of them, stick it on the other. There we go. Peel this off, and now we are ready to stick it onto the toilet seat. I'm I learned later I should have used this, probably the I'm other able to actually 3M. This later. It's not just that oh. part, it's this part. And I guess I just attach it. Okay. That does not seem very secure. Honestly, that seems very insecure. But there we go. The Lifty Lou has been installed, the original toilet seat handle. So now I can grab the Lifty Lou and lift the seat. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And also, if you just want to lift that, look at that. Double action for you right there, the Lifty Lou. Um, it is made with recycled ocean bound plastic. I'm not sure how they were able to catch the plastic that was <laughs> going to make it into the sea, but um, there you go. The Lifty Lou, maybe you know someone who needs a Lifty Lou. <laughs> uh, the, the, there was a better 3M option, I realized later. The seat kind of had this concave to it. I said it looked very uh, not secure but I should have added this one see how it has like a little bump oh yeah to it yeah. that would have fixed my yeah. issue there um I was given the lifty loo uh, you know quite a lot of hate but honestly if you are very concerned about that little area being clean I feel like it would stay a bit cleaner than the rest of yeah. the toilet seat. you know At least you kind of know hotel what restroom should have these public Absolutely. restrooms in hotels yes. that would Oh, that's yeah, yeah. That's just saying, yeah, older people or you have arthritis, this could be a help. Yeah. I, I actually, you know, I was kind of joking around with, but I actually kind of like the gadget a lot. Yeah. And the you tile, get two of them, right? The tile is a little silly. I don't know quite what decor it would fit into, but the white option seems pretty standard. It seems like that wouldn't yeah. clash with anything. Um, the white option is also, oh, both options were a two-pack. Uh, I forgot to mention that. I got two in there. So I could add another handle to an, another toilet. And um, there you go. The lifting. Yeah, that's not, yeah not, I like that. Yeah. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a pretty good, pretty, pretty good piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> with that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Oh, our email is from Michael Prine, uh, who might be in the chat room right now. I see a Michael. I'm not sure that's Michael Prine. Uh, but he has an interesting gadget he bought in 2019. And uh, we'll see his gadget, and then I'll read the rest of his comments. Good morning, Dick and Chad. This is Mike Prine in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've got another energy store uh, generating device. Wow. I bought this back in 2019 for about $200. Uh, it only generates about 20 watts, which is enough for uh, small lights or uh, charging your cell phone when you don't have power. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. It could be mounted on a board to use your uh, feet to power it, but I primarily use it in a demo mode where I use the uh, hand crank, I use my hands to crank it. And it produces DC uh, output rather than AC, but that's fine for most of the little wall warts. Uh, they uh, were on just fine on AC or DC. And uh, it'll allow you to recharge your cell phone when you don't have any power or just a little fun little demo for uh, solar fares or renewable energy exhibits. Uh, it currently sells for about $250 on Amazon. I included the link in my email. Uh, but it now is paired with a small uh, rechargeable LED flashlight. Hope you enjoyed the gadget. Uh, I have lots of fun with it showing it off to people. Take care. Have a good day. That is that's pretty cool. Honestly, yeah. and and it's actual bicycle pedals on it that you uh, can use with your hand or your feet. And Michael said he's retired from the University of New Mexico, but the fact that he said he uses it for demos sounds like maybe he's still teaching. Yeah. Um, or just always a teacher at heart. You can't get yeah paint. yes exactly yeah it only has ten ratings yeah now it's more a little more money now, but it comes with that rechargeable flashlight that you can yeah you, you know he said it, it puts out DC only I guess I was trying that to figure like, that out that's crazy that it uh, outputs DC that plug looks AC. Doesn't it look like an AC plug? But I guess he's saying the wall the wall plugs they can handle it. So interesting. Definitely the thing I feel like you would do is you would charge a battery. <laughs> or something. Yeah, right, that right, way right, like yes. <sighs> and then, you know, your light just wouldn't immediately go out. Um, well, so didn't they have something like this on Gilligan's Island? I don't remember it, but it sounds like something good for a boat. Where you're going to be trapped somewhere and yeah. you can find, generate definitely. your own. Like, this is definitely perfect for the, the bug out bag or like the emergency preparedness backpack. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I can't believe it's so expensive. I wish that it was less. No, I know. I was just thinking the same thing. I wish that it could be, be a bit more obtainable. Um, Two, it's it says the man who just spent $3,500 on virtual glasses. <laughs> There's a reason. I'm broke yeah, you, now. How are your Vision Pro with it? I it's it's almost it's 10 watts raw off. It needs to be 30 watts. I was just oh, okay. I might well, be able to slowly trickle charge it or something. I'll be able to spatially compute for 30 minutes um, <laughs> at a time during a hurricane. Um, I mean, I definitely have def you know I've seen a lot of uh, like for that price you could almost get solar panels. <laughs> <laughs> At this yeah, point, that, yeah, you're right. You're you right. know, nowadays, uh, for for about that price, you you buy a solar panel or two with a battery backup, and um, uh, it would be competitive around that price. So, um, there you go. pretty cool, pretty uh, cool. Thanks so for sharing. Anyway, Thanks Michael, for sharing. Thank that. you. This is like Michael's second or third video. So, Michael, uh, email me your snail mail address, and you'll get the current issue of Mad Magazine. Which, by the way, is a mega hit. Did you get yours? I did, but I forgot it. I don't have no, it No, that's me. okay. That's okay. I um, did get it. 
You want to get me a cup off the table? Um, oh my God. Evidently, somebody called. I got two phone calls. I cannot get mad anywhere. Please, can you send me a copy? So I found it online anywhere from $20 to somebody was asking for $50 for theirs. Whoa. Oh, yes. Because of who is on the cover, I'm, of course. So, Did you hear that the Super Bowl was the most watched television in history. In history. In history. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Yes, yes. So Taylor Swift is on the cover with her boyfriend. <laughs> and I spoke to the editor. I, I said, this is going to be a sell. And she said, the only downside is, what do we do for the next cover? <laughs> okay. Because this is getting a lot of press and it's all over Facebook. Um, anyway, that's what you'll be playing for if you send in a video or if you play the what the heck is it. Videos one to three minutes. Uh, like Michael, you can be in it. Just make sure it's horizontal format. We can see the gadget and hear you talk. Uh, Michael's video is perfect. Uh, put it up on YouTube. You can click uh, unlisted if you want. And you'll get a URL. Don't click private. Then only you can see it. Uh, send the URL to mail at gizwiz.tv. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And do it now because we need one for next week. Okay? We do. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Um, Dickie D, they're going to have to uh, hire you to make some more content just for Taylor Swift. <laughs> She's like too big yeah. of a pop icon to... To, to pass up. I feel like they're going to need to create new stuff. Yeah. An all-new, Taylor-only edition. <laughs> and the if you Taylor need Taylor. a consultant, yeah. a Taylor consultant, I'm here. Yeah. I can yeah. we need help a you out. We need picture holding it. That's what we need. <laughs> um, okay. Well, with that, let's move on to the letter. All right, so Mo Motors, who always finds weird stuff, asked the question, will this gadget foster good relations with other drivers? Now, it's a Kickstarter project, so let's let's watch a little video before we see how well it did, okay? Okay. Well, here it we is. We believe if there were improved communication between drivers, the road can become a better place. This idea led to our creation of CarWink, your faithful little driving companion. CarWink reinvents the way drivers communicate with each other. CarWink, pedestrian crossing. The hands-free voice control function allows for a safe and convenient communication between drivers. CarWink, the bird. Fueled by the power of the sun. CarWink's solar charging means you will never have to worry about running out of juice. Built on the foundation of driver interaction, CarWink is here to relay your message and enhance driver I'm relationships. Say thank you. Thank you. We aim to minimize road rage and stress for drivers. Let CarWink's smile open up your horizons and show you a brand new adventure. Uh, we can go out there. Uh, w would you buy this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Carwink, uh, ask for her number. Do it for me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, just, first of all, it, it's almost too tiny. Yes. Or, and then if it was bigger, it would be an obstruction. It's small. I, this, this voice communication is really the only way that I could ever imagine that you could use it you can't sit there and type a message or no, click a no. message you know yeah. that it wouldn't want that so there's the voice option is the only option and i guarantee you it's going to be crummy i mean i just can't, i just can't imagine it is fast and reliable and displays the image that you want every single time you tell it what you want it to display i just cannot imagine that it would be quick it's going to take you know i'm going to say you know car wink tell that person to Move off, <laughs> you know, back off. Processing, 
processing. They're getting, yeah. they're leaving. They're, uh, they're not gonna go out of range. You're not, they're not gonna see your tiny little screen. Processing, processing, connecting, 5G error. Yeah. I can just now imagine you, that's annoying. Yeah, I, you know, can you go back to it? Because I can't figure out, you can't buy it. No, and it looks a, like the Kickstarter campaign ended. Well, it says pre-order. I, I think that yeah, the Kickstarter pre- ended and they can... So now, they got a hundred thousand dollars. Money because the pre-order just doesn't bring up a way to order one. I'm I'm so confused. Kickstarter confuses me. I don't understand it. I don't understand it either. Jesus anyway, per. now we're on Indiegogo. How did we leave Kickstarter to go to Indiegogo? This seems <laughs> like they shouldn't do that. Uh, Super Early Bird International. Oh, there, yeah. Okay. There's only one left. The carrying pouch is 10 bucks. The regular price is 94 This is all grayed Expected out. I don't understand how any of this stuff works. Six years ago. Oh, this is 20, last updated 2022. Two years ago. Right, but delivery said, said um, 2018, I think. <laughs> there it is. You're right. <laughs> No, I don't think this would, to answer Mo's question, I don't think this would foster a community of com, of communication with car drivers. I don't yeah, think that, no. I think we're closer to full autonomous driving than we are to something like the Car Wink fostering communication between yeah, drivers. No, I think it would foster communication with people driving up to your window and doing. Yeah, I don't think you want the communication that would be. <laughs> you know, encouraged with car wink. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's interesting. I like the, I like the uh, idea though. There's definitely been times I've wanted it and I've wanted to send a message to the car behind me. um, And it's been frustrating, you know, either like literally legitimate, like there's a crossing and there's a person or there's a freaking stop Uh, sign. Yeah. 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 Or the sign says I can't turn on a red and I know that you want me to turn right on red, but the sign says not to turn right on. You know, I've definitely been in that situation, but um, I think that is just not that answer. No, it's just a sad fact of life, not something that I need a gadget to fix. Uh, Okie dokie. Well, Mo Mo always finds weird stuff. Mo, yeah, thanks for finding that. Um, Uh, Send in your letters, mail at gizwiz.tv. With that, I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so much. We were talking today, just this morning, just this earlier this episode, nine years of fan support, nine years of being um, supported by our community, and it's incredible. It's absolutely amazing. So thank you guys so, so, so much for the years and years of support. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for your generosity. If you like the Gizwiz, please consider giving back. Head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon tab. There's a Patreon link there. There's also a PayPal link there uh, for you to give back to the show. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch us live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. You can also watch the Gizfiz. It uh, happens on Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern Time. So head on over to gizwiz.tv to watch Gizfiz as well, an hour later than our normal Gizwiz show. Uh, That'll just be there at gizwiz.tv. You can also subscribe on Podcatchers or YouTube. And you can also head on over to gizwiz.biz. That's Dickie D's website where he writes articles about everything that we talk about on the show. So if you ever need more information, head on over there. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? You gotta guess what this entire gadget is. We're only two weeks away, right? No, we still got a month. Wait, how much time we got? Oh, like two, yeah, two weeks sort of. What is two today, 13? Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. So we're gonna be learning this uh, gadget. This is coming up on the last chance. So get on over there and get a guessing. Uh, not to give it away, um, but this is actually uh, Taylor Swift's uh, long lost <laughs> tea set. Um, and lots of imaginary friends used to meet around this imaginary tea set. 
very important. Very, very important. Uh, six Mad Magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, or interesting answers. Six Mad Magazines for that. Twelve mag Mad Magazines for funny, clever, or hilarious answers. So get a guessin' over at gizwiz.com. Biz! That wraps it up for our show. Heading into 18 years. We'll see you on the next one. I'll be here. <laughs>